Lately, DJI has been extremely busy with new hardware and several updates. Here comes yet another new version of DJI Flive Up for all the models of the prosumer line. In this video, I will focus on the Mini 3 Pro, as there are several interesting new features. If you own the new RC controller with a built in screen, make sure to have an internet connection. After turning on the controller and the drone, a notification about the update should appear on the screen. It is otherwise possible to force the update by going to the About tab of the settings and clicking on Check for updates. The process of the update is longer than usual, but once it is done, the aircraft firmware will be updated to the new version 01000400. The RC controller to version 01020100. DJI Fly Up version is now 180. Owner of the traditional RC N1 controller should download the new version 180 of DJI Fly Up. Before the first flight after the update, it is suggested to check the main settings, especially the ones in the safety tab, as they might have been modified. The new app brings several features. The first one is a cruise control mode, similar to the excellent one of the Mavic 3 Classic, and recently added to the Mavic 3. In the case of the Mini 3 Pro, cruise control is limited to hyperlapse mode. Let's see how it works. In the option Button Customization, in the control tab of the settings, it is now possible to set one of the two buttons, C1 or C2, to hyperlapse cruise control. Notice that the options for each button are now organized into three groups, Control, Camera and Other. Hyperlapse cruise control is at the bottom of the control group. The mode free of hyperlapse is generally considered the poor relative. It is meant for performing all sorts of moves during a hyperlapse using the two sticks of the remote controller. But in hyperlapse all movements are extremely fast and it is very difficult to perform perfectly smooth moves manually. So the resulting movies had very abrupt change of direction. The shooting process for a hyperlapse takes a good amount of time and keeping the fingers in the correct position on the two sticks for over 15 minutes was very tedious. So, so far I was using the free mode only for static time lapse with the drone hovering. Now let's try the new function. I choose an interval of 3 seconds and a length of the movie of 10 seconds. The value of maximum speed is critical to get smooth results in this mode. I set it at 0.1 meters per second, the minimum value, to avoid jerky moves. After hitting the shutter to start the hyperlapse, I move the right stick straight to the right, for a lateral move. I don't have to worry about how far I push the stick, as the movement will be limited to the maximum speed of 0.1 meter per second. As you can see the drone is moving slowly to the right. After a few shots, I hit the C2 button, the one set on hyperlapse cruise control. I can now let go of the right stick, and the drone continues to advance in the same direction at the same speed. Notice that the two icons showing the horizontal and vertical speed are now yellow with a lock to show that we are in cruise control mode. After a few shots, I try to add an ascending move, so I push the left stick forward and the aircraft combines the ascending move with the lateral one due to the cruise control. When I let go of the left stick, the drone continues the move laterally to the right. So it is possible to temporarily add extra movement while in cruise control. Excellent! Then I decided to try a different move, so I hit button C2 to exit cruise control. I push the left stick forward to ascend and the right stick to the right and towards me for a diagonal move to the right and backward. Immediately after I push C2 to reactivate cruise control. The drone enters the mode again, combining the two moves. And again I can let go of the two sticks. Finally, towards the end, I tried a change in altitude. I press the C2 button to stop the cruise control, and I pull the left sticks towards me, and the right one again diagonally at about 5 o'clock. 
I press again C2 to set the cruise control and the drone continues the diagonal move, this time descending. This is the resulting hyperlapse before stabilizing. As you can see the movement is very smooth. In real life situations I would not change direction so many times, but it was useful for our purposes. The Hyperlapse Cruise Control is a very flexible tool. It opens up plenty of new possibility for the mode 3. It is obviously possible to use a slightly higher value for maximum speed, if more action is needed. But I suggest not pushing it too far to avoid abrupt moves. Who oh no, knows, maybe DJI will soon implement Cruise Control for video for the Mini 3 Pro, like the Mavic 3 and the 3 Classic. It would be a sensational tool. Since we are in hyperlapse mode, when the Mini 3 Pro was released, the mode course lock was not working properly, with some big jumps between frames. DJI is very good at solving these kind of bugs, so let's see if things have improved. And indeed, course lock hyperlapse works perfectly well now. If you want to know everything about hyperlapses with the Mini 3 Pro, you can watch my video about it. I will link it at the end of this one. Don't hesitate to hit the like button, it helps to spread the video to more viewers. Another novelty of this upgrade is the reorganization of the control of the movements of the aircraft and the gimbal. We access them through the control tab of the settings at the option Gain and Expo Tuning. There are now three tabs at the top for the three different speed modes. Cine, Normal and Sport. The first two items are for the lateral rotation of the drone around its axis, when pushing the left stick of the remote controller laterally. Max angular velocity controls how fast the drone will rotate when pushing the stick. With the factory settings it is in my opinion way too fast for smooth cinematic movements. Let's see how it works at minimum speed. I'm pushing the left stick all the way to the side, and the rotating movement is under control. By setting at the maximum speed, as you can see, we lose all sort of control. I like to set it just above the minimum value to get the best response, especially when performing several moves at the same time. Your smoothness control how the aircraft reacts after the movement. With a value of 0, the move stops immediately when the left stick of the control is released. This is not what we want. With the maximum value, the moves come to a halt very gently after releasing the stick. I like to set this value well above the midpoint. Further down there are the same controls, but this time relative to the tilt of the gimbal. They work in a similar way to the ones for the rotation of the aircraft. And again, I prefer to set the speed at a very low value and the smoothness above the midpoint. For normal export modes, we also have the option to control the expo value for pitch, yaw, and vertical movements. This feature is not available in Cine mode. The Expo value controls the response to partial movement of the stick or the gimbal wheel. Let's see how it works with Yo. At the minimum value, the movement will be extremely slow until the stick reaches the midpoint, and it speeds up abruptly after. At the maximum value, the movement is quite fast even with a little displacement of the stick. Again, the setting I prefer is slightly below the midpoint. As you can see, there are several tools to fine tune the effects of the two sticks, which is crucial for cinematic movements. Another minor feature is that in case of a low battery alert, when the app prompts for a return to home, it is now possible to hit the bottom C1 of the remote controller to cancel and disregard the alert, or the button C2 to confirm.
Click on this link to watch my video about hyperlapses with the Mini 3 Pro. And don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video interesting. Thank you.